for those of you just tuning in, this is Quincy Jones in an insane asylum. <laughs> no, what is he? He's making a speech to who, Robin? He's at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducting Nashui Erzigan. Who is some record company guy. Into the Hall of Fame. He's the brother of a record company guy. Record company guys like to give each other awards. You know, I can't get an award. And the reason <laughs> I can't get an award is because I'm too busy working. Record company guys give each other awards. And you know what they give each other awards for? For listening to records. These and are guys, liking them. Yeah, and liking them. <laughs> These are guys who think that they should have a big award ceremony because they signed a couple of hit bands. They don't tell you about all the clunkers they signed and lost money for the record company. Let me tell you something. If you had a job where the whole day you went out and listened to bands and people brought you tapes, and plus you had a bunch of A&R guys who listened to tapes and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and you signed millions of guys, and out of those millions of guys, you get five or six good records a year. And that's what they give each other awards for. That is it. That's the whole thing. So they march Quincy Jones up there to be some kind of lackey and praise Nashui Erdogan. Nashui. <laughs> Nashui? I think it's Nashui. Or Na I don't know. Is it Nashui? I think it's Nashui in this country, Nashui in his homeland. <laughs> Let's see how Quincy says it. His parents were, uh, I think, from China. Where are they from? Aren't they Turks? And they, uh, the first thing they see, that's how they name their kids. They saw a pair of new shoes, and they were like, new shoey. <laughs> and uh, that's how he got what, his name. What were they looking at when they saw Erdogan? Earth, the Earth. Erdy, <laughs> Earthy. Erdogan. The Earth again? I just saw it yesterday. Earth again. <laughs> and what about, uh, what is the other one's name? Amit? Yeah. He, he was at a Mets game. Ah, Met. He saw uh, Daryl Strawberry. Ah, Met. They have a daughter named No Penis. <laughs> <laughs> no Penis. No Penis. A Met. No Penis. No Shoey. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. So here he's giving himself an award by Quincy Jones. And he's dead, no less. Hello. Hello. People of Earth. <laughs> In Turkish, they would say Nasosan. Right, Ahmed? Oh, Choki. Boy. You're dumb. And you know, Quincy Jones has a lot of credibility with these people. So at the beginning here, everyone's like, yeah. Oh, maybe he's look, into something. Look how relaxed he is. He's going somewhere yeah. with this. He's speaking Turkish. He's speaking a lot of different languages. Good speech. It's going to be kind of entertaining. <laughs> Little did Genius. they know. I hear by the end of the speech, people were like dragging him off the stage. <laughs> serious times. And because of the serious times, we will go the other way. The one thing I can't understand is why. Next, we have to tell me this. I've done records. Oh, Nesh, he's alive? I thought he was dead. Yeah, I thought he was dead. I guess he's alive. Reverend <laughs> Baker? With the Clovers, Chuck Willis, Leslie Gore, mm, Louis Jordan. Are these the people Neshwe? And they still say... This is, these are the people that Quincy has done records with. Oh. I'm still a bebopper. <laughs> it's okay, you know. I mean, you know what I'm saying, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Big Maybell. A whole lot of shaking going on. We did a lot of records together. I did it with him. Ray Charles. And the bottom line is, I came here tonight to talk about his brother, who is the quintessential <laughs> essence of a European man. Oh, yeah, that's a tough word. Come on. <laughs> well, quintessential. <laughs> but when I use it, I make damn well sure I've rehearsed it a few times. Quintessential. Sessional. <laughs> Quintessential. His brother, who is the quintessential <laughs> essence of a European. By then, everybody knows we're in trouble. Now, what are we doing? And it was involved in American music. Isn't the quintessential the <laughs> fifth anniversary of America? <laughs> Quintessential? 
And a lot of Americans don't understand this. They really don't. White or black, they don't understand it. They don't understand that black music was understood by Neshui Erdogan. Hmm. White people don't understand that? Or black people. Or black people. No, nobody understands it. Wait a second. Let me get this straight. What he's saying now. Let's try to understand what he's saying. Because you know, even if you maybe he is making sense, huh? You know, maybe he's loaded. Maybe he's not. But you know, sometimes even when you're loaded, a lot of truths come out. All right. Let's let's see. And I'm not saying the guy's loaded. Maybe it's that brain when they open up his brain or something. I don't know. In that movie, they made him pretty coherent. Could be narcolepsy. You never know. Yeah, you don't Could know what it is. Some kind of uh, infirmity. Could be Thunderbird. You don't know what it is. Could be anything. It could be the hey, this is the way the guy talks. Yeah, I've never heard him give a speech. <laughs> right. Every time we see him, he's chopped up in a movie. <laughs> you know, so you take one of these statements, it's okay. <laughs> um, he's saying that white people don't understand and black people don't understand black music. Wait a minute. That couldn't uh, be true. That's not what he said. Wait, wait, let it? me go back. I want to understand this. <laughs> Let's get into it. Don't. White or black, they don't understand it. They don't understand that black music hmm. was understood by Neshui Erdogan. It was taken truly seriously by Neshui and the entire European establishment. So you're telling me, is he saying that a Turk the roots of rock and roll were discovered by a Turk? Apparently, what he's saying is that... <laughs> Help me. Neshui... Uh, I don't know whether he's saying black and white Americans can't understand how a European could understand black music, or whether none of us understood black music. It was Neshui who understood black music. He's that befuddled that we don't even know <laughs> what he's saying. Let's, should we continue? I don't think we should labor on no, this. No. There's a long speech ahead of us. Yes, because maybe he wraps it all up and it all makes sense. Right. Yet. Maybe we give the man a chance. Okay. As the black American music that was the world's greatest living art form. <laughs> so I see he's now discovered his whole black... Uh, a world's greatest living art form? They make lousy wives, the blacks, but damn, they make some good music. Did he marry a white woman? A couple Peggy, of them. Peggy Lipton. Yeah. Everybody's discovering their blackness in music. Ugh. By the establishment, quote unquote. And Neshui. Neshui. And Ahmed. They have to take these guys seriously with names like Neshui. And Ahmed. <laughs> Ahmed. <laughs> yep. You know, everybody here doesn't understand this right now. They helped to understand that this was the important music. This poor guy, Nashui, he's sitting there, hey, Quincy Jones is, is toasting me, and it's turning into a nightmare. <laughs> and, you know, and he's probably like trying to be prideful every time he says, hey, Nashui understands this, and Nashui, but no one understands Quincy. And you know, he probably saying, wow, Quincy Jones saying, I understand, and yet we don't understand Quincy. Maybe this is what he's trying to explain, that black people are totally un not understandable to anybody but Neshui. Yeah, I, that's what I think he's saying. He's saying that this Turk, this Neshui, is the only guy who understands black people. If you get a chance, you ought to get our general manager, Tom, in here to describe what was going on uh, with the Erdogan family while uh, while he was giving the speech. They were sort of moving towards the stage trying to pull Quincy Jones off. Oh, really? Yeah, they kept like edging towards him, and they sort of got him off at one point, and then he got away and got back on for like another 10 minutes. Hey, Gary. Yes. Not to, not to interrupt you, but you, can you give me some tissues? Sure. All right, thanks. <laughs> Wish Carrie would just get oh, me oh, stuff boy. and not talk so much. I was glad to see that he did pre-interview Tom, though. Yeah, he interviewed Tom. He was pre-interviewing Tom so he couldn't pre-interview the girls. <laughs> Baba Bowie. <laughs> Worldwide, as one of the world's greatest living art forms. Hmm. He keeps it's repeating it. for us to understand now. See, yeah. you don't understand being around New York. I was in New York in night. In the 1950s, uh -oh. where music was about... I like everything. You don't understand. You don't understand. Nobody understands but Quincy. <laughs> you don't understand. Right? Every minute you don't understand. Does nobody know anything but Quincy? Did he just say, you don't understand? You don't understand. So Quincy's family, I mean, 
Amit's uh, was trying to pull him off there in Neshui. Is Neshui Neshui's alive? Dead. Oh, Neshui's dead. dead? Right. Because he's talking to Neshui. He did refer to Neshui once during this conversation. Yeah. Neshui died of cancer like a That's year ago. That's what we thought. And it's really upsetting to the family because he founded Atlantic with his brother and everyone loves him. So it was Amit and then Neshui's widow and his kids were there. <laughs> right. Sort of standing as to Quincy. Right. And then they apparently they went out in the lobby and they were, the kids were like pacing around. They were so frantic over the speech. Hey. Well, see, they don't understand. Quincy is still in mourning. He's all broken up. Yeah, maybe he's thinking he's... Because he thinks Nashville's still alive, I think. <laughs> That's what I'm getting out of this. He, is a, he can't let him go. <laughs> We're in the middle of not the dog, understanding. The doggy in the window. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, here he goes. That's right, that's right. This is what music was about in the 50s? Yeah. We're back to the 50s, because you don't understand what music is about. L wait, i got to rewind a little. Yeah, because in New York, called? he was in New York in the 50s. Check this out. You don't understand being around New York. I was in New York in, in the 1950s, where music was about... Music. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Baba oh, Bowie. Baba Bowie. In the window. Wait, wait, wait. Come <laughs> on, we keep messing up. The pause yeah, right. is so long. All right. The log, the doggy in the window. The Yellow Rosa, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of song? The songs about that, you know, Davy Crockett. <laughs> that was what popular music was about then. I was right in the city when that was happening, you know. I was an arranger for the Tommy Darcy Orchestra. I think he's doing a rap. He's kind of doing a rap like what I do. You guys don't understand what radio was like when I came to New York. It was so boring. Yeah, but this is not a thing about Quincy Jones. I know. This guy's way out of his mind. But I think he's leading up to Neshui coming in and... Oh, he's going to bring... Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> Poor Neshui. Tommy Dorsey was saying the songs about uh, <laughs> that, that's pop music, you know. Hmm. And a young man came from Memphis, Texas, one night. Memphis, that Texas. Was a ranger for Tommy Dorsey. Memphis, Texas. I don't believe that one exists. <laughs> or maybe there is a Memphis, Texas. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's right. Mm. You know how like there's a Paris, Paris New York, right? <laughs> And it was, uh, his name was Elvis Presley. Well, no, he's not right. No, no. <laughs> Howdy, Howdy, Bob. <laughs> Maybe Elvis came from Memphis, Texas. No. Thomas Darcy said, uh, okay, we'll get rid of this tomorrow night. We'll get off our back. The next night, we got 8,000 letters because he was the great white hope. Mm hmm. Hmm. The white thing. Boy, this guy's got right, a lot right. of racial... You know, all these people, they, they get drunk and all this anger. Yeah, I know. All this racial hostility. <laughs> and Elvis was white. That great white, great white hope from Nessie and ah. Turk. And... <laughs> hey, calm down, Quincy. Maybe he wasn't drunk, though. Maybe he's not. Maybe he was straight. Maybe just the way the guy talks. I don't know. But this is kind of a really... And Quincy, you thought, was one of the nice ones. <laughs> yeah, he's not one of the nice ones. I knew it. <laughs> All I can say is I've seen 100 interviews with Quincy Jones, and he never talked like that. And yeah, I know. Ones. Well, maybe that's why everyone was trying to get him to sit down. <laughs> and maybe in the morning he'd regret the speech. <laughs> you know, And also, you know, here's a guy. He's married white women and stuff. Why so hostile to uh, white people? You know, what, what well, makes... you know, now he's hostile to half of his kids. Yeah. Because each of them is half white. I know. I don't get it. I don't know what's going on with that guy. How long is this speech anyway? <laughs> I don't know. This guy's but just as going on. Gary said they dragged him off and he got back. They dragged him off and he went back up? Well, uh, Tom was trying to explain it to me yesterday. Tom said that they were sort of hovering around him. Yeah. And, you know, he said, you know, Amit was like standing like 10 feet away from him. And every time he talked, he'd take like a little sidestep right. to sort of get closer. It was sort of the signal to Quincy. Mm hmm. To finish up, mm -hmm. and I think he said that at one point Quincy walked away from the mic and then turned around and went back. Oh, cool! <laughs> Let's get back to the action. Very difficult for us to difficult for, to understand what the emotional revolution 
that happened in America in 1955. It happened in England in 1963. I was there too with Brian Epstein, the Mayfair Hotel, when the Beatles said, we like what the Everly Brothers are doing, but we'll never make it in America. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> Boy, this guy's everywhere. He's I, almost like that monolith in uh, 2001. <laughs> I was say, you know, there are certain people who get to be everywhere cool. We have no idea. If we could be anywhere we want now, we don't even know where to go. There's some guys who just like know to be with Brian Epstein. With the Beatles before they're coming to America. At the Mayfair Hotel. Yeah. At the Mayfair. You know, like, like we wouldn't even know. <laughs> we don't know what hotel it's happening at. We don't know where to be. We barely get here. <laughs> We know what happened afterwards, and that's what American music is all about, you know. It's about getting together and putting the things together. You talk Cause he's talking about the Beatles getting together, and he's saying that's what American music well, is all about. He's talking about England. That's what American music is all about. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like wacky you know maybe we're not smart enough to understand yeah. what he's saying hey he's got a lot more money than we do <laughs> like guns and roses mm -hmm. the rolling stones it's the exact same thing <laughs> exact same thing Nessue. it is not the Guns N' Roses is the same thing as the Rolling Stones. It's the exact same thing. It absolutely isn't. Do you remember in high school when you have a teacher like this? I know. And you know what kills me? This guy's like considered a musical genius. He has no right to be famous or rich. He should be a janitor somewhere. <laughs> Who never should have gotten Peggy Lipton. Oh. I should be with Peggy Lipton. <laughs> this guy... Rolling Stones? Well, I guess he gets in the studio and that's where the magic happens, you Guns know? Guns N' Roses, exact same thing. Guns N' Roses... <laughs> Uh, Stones, same difference. <laughs> exact same thing. Peggy loved me, but she should have chosen Link. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't deserve her. <laughs> oh, dear. And what is, what is his music? Totally original? Quincy Jones? What is Quincy Jones' music? Nobody knows. Nobody even knows what he does. They still call him Bebop. <laughs> I'm Bebop. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's the greatest guy ever lived? Who's that guy from the Dean Martin show? <laughs> he used to come on with the beard. Foster Brooks? Yeah! <laughs> you know who's good guys? Who? Fred Norris. <laughs> exact same thing. Exact same thing as the Archie. <laughs> Lazy bunch of bastards. Those Guns N' Roses. Stones. Music was about the doggy in the window. <laughs> <laughs> the doggy in the window. <sighs> what was the one? You want to run the tank? <laughs> David Crockett. Crockett. <laughs> and then a man came from Mem Memphis, Texas. Nestle <laughs> Presley. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Okay. This is great. This is just great. <laughs> had an insight about this a long time ago. Uh-oh. He was the first one that understood that he should have an accredited course in jazz in UCLA. Who? Neshui? What this? <laughs> oh, the Beatles? Did he mention a name? Yeah. I found out what happened. Uh, Quincy presented the award. Right. And then he got back to the podium again. Oh, is that it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they could have given him away. It's like a magnet. He had a lot to say. To have a Jazzman record store in New Hollywood and cross the Crescent and Jazzman labels before joining Ahmed. Oh, no. Oh, uh, uh, Land these guys recognize jazz. Okay. Now he's onto jazz. But he was just into the Stones and Guns N' Roses two seconds ago. Right. The people that were in the audience said that not only was it really rambling, but they were really insulted by it. Why? Because they said that, uh, that he was sort of telling everyone in the audience that you don't know anything about music. Yeah, of course. But they don't. Because most of them are just like radio guys. <laughs> and some bad, some low level record company executives. And record labels in the mid 50s. Atlantic 
was one of the first pioneers, you know. Young people don't understand this, what this all is about. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> young people, man. Yeah, voices everywhere. And my wife, Peggy Lipton, didn't understand either. Where are you, River? <laughs> <laughs> One of the great pioneering labels back then, they had the insight to know that Atlantic was one of the great pioneering labels, and next we brought his knowledge, his in... <laughs> At this point, they got him hooked up to, like, booze intravenously. <laughs> <laughs> if they could so, just find the right mix, it might even him out. <laughs> Did somebody change the needle on your thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think I need a new bottle. You know, you know, seriously, this guy might not even have been drinking. I swear. I believe. <laughs> this, this might be the way he talks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just let's say that. Because I had teachers like this. Right. In fact, most of my teachers are like this. That's why I'm so confused. <laughs> it's not my fault. That's why I can barely follow conversations. <laughs> it's in this, in, in... But this is the kind of speech you pray for at these awards. I, I'm sure you wish you were there for this. Absolutely. I'm sorry I missed... Right. Everybody else was so coherent. And everyone's saying, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's the only thing to talk about at the whole stupid award show. This is fun. Who wants to watch John Lee Hooker get an award? Enthusiasm, impeccable taste for the young company and under the leadership of Madison. This is rock and roll. Acting like this. <laughs> and our Matt, Nashua, and Jerry Wexler, Atlantic Records turned out to be the one of the greatest the drugs recorded. The greatest what? I don't know. I yeah. think he just gobbled up that word. Bunch of words. <laughs> the record errors. The modern jazz quartet. Wait a minute, roll that back. Turned out to be the one of the greatest recordings, recording of the record errors of the modern jazz quartet. <laughs> <laughs> Lornette, Ornette Coleman, Charlie Mingus, John Coltrane. People are laughing. Carmet, I'm at Craig. Carmet McCray. Carmet. <laughs> Comet. Lornette. Oh, people are applauding. Now they're applauding to get yeah, him off. maybe they think he's into it. Right. Okay, thank you, Carmen McRae. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Jackson and my good friend. Now they just encouraged him because now, did he oh, say here. Milt Jackson or Michael Jackson? I think he said Milt Jackson. Oh, okay. Milt Jackson and my good friend, Ray Charles. It means a lot to me, you know, to talk about the roots of what it is also about. Atlantic turned out to be the greatest recordings of the great era of recorded that turned out to be the <laughs> essence of the records like the modern jazz quartet, Ornette Coleman. Uh oh, he did, uh -oh. He did this. <laughs> he did this already. Charlie Mingus. <laughs> Oh no. John Coltrane, <laughs> Carmen McRae, Thelonious Mech. Thelonious oh. Mech. And my good friend Ron Shales. <laughs> oh, oh God. Oh God. Ron, Ronald Charles. <laughs> Raul Charles. Raul Charles. Charles. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to be. Oh boy. Oh man. All right, we're having a problem today. I was fortunate enough to be. Close. To yeah, we take him off in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> man's, man's crippled. With Ray Charles in Seattle in 1947 when we were 14 years old. They should put this in his movie. Add it in. Edit it in. Oh, please. It's got to be. Well, I was 14 years old. He was 16 years old. <laughs> you and know, Ahmed said, Don't want to get the facts this wrong. This man has something that's happening. Who? Amit. Now we're on Amit. Also, he did a pretty good job of producing Pele for the Cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I do. <laughs> Does anyone remember laughter? No, I don't know how to say it, but these dudes were, were really behind me when I was trying to get my thing together. I was in a basement. <laughs> still trying. I was going to say, are they still behind you? And Ahmed, and Jerry Wexler, Neshuri. and Neshuri Erdogan, they were saying that Clovers and Laverne Baker and all these people, they knew they were happening. They knew it before everybody else knew it was happening. 
what he wanted to. Uh-huh. Let's bring him up. Let's uh-huh. bring him up. Let's bring up Sandman. Okay? I ain't finished yet. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. he's not finished. He said, let's bring up who? John Lee Hooker. John Lee Hooker. And he goes, I'm not finished yet. He's got more to say. Oh, this is great. <laughs> you so, think the people are applauding to like... Yeah, to get them off. Sort of yeah, like say, like hey, end. it's an end. Hey, okay, yeah, right. Okay, thank you. Someone's saying, hey, come on, let's get going on this. Oh, we got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> and this is a real serious affair too. I mean, you know, these are like all executives and stuff there. I've got to tell you about the time when we went into the 48th Street studio. Uh-oh. With Phil Ramona. Phil Ramona was the engineer. Oh, was it Phil Ramona or Bill Ramona? Oh. The young genius. Yeah, it's Phil it Ramona. Must be Phil engineer Ramona. when we did an album with Ray Charles called the, the genius of Ray Charles. And we had half of Duke Ellington's band, we have half of Count Basie's band. Uh-oh. And we went in the studio and we said, let's do a record. Thank you. When we finished the take, one of the things called Let the Good Times Roll, Phil Ramone said, come in the studio. And there was Neshui, Nash. Jerry Wexler, and it was Ahmed Wexler. <laughs> Ahmed Wexler? Ahmed Wexler? His name's Ahmed Ertigan. Now he's changed his family. <laughs> Ahmed Wexler. <laughs> Ahmed Ertigan. <laughs> right. Caught that one. Whoops. And he said... <laughs> he's just the guy he loves. <laughs> he know his name. Here Wexler. is a sound you've never heard before. It was called Stereo. All right. There was a sound coming out of every side of the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> it was half of Duke Ellington's band. It was half of the bass's band. Hey, let him go on. Wait a minute, guys. What is he saying? He's, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. Uh, he's getting angry. It was half of the bass's band. Wait a minute, guys. And it was, the, it was the first time I'd worked with C, Ray Charles since we'd left Seattle. Gotcha. I met Ray Charles when I was 14 years old. We heard that. And he was 16 years old. Oh, no. <laughs> and Jerry, Neshui, and I met with there. It was very important. I'd like to be this guy's accountant. i just take all his money. <laughs> Get him all... Uh... Yeah. It was no mixing down. You said, whatever you come out of the studio with, that's what you get. And the right. sound is what you get, is what you hear. <laughs> I see <The> poster. Engine- <laughs> <laughs> right next to my poster of, uh, this is the first day in the rest of your life, make the most of it. What if there was a war and nobody came? And of course, this. And the sound is what you get, is what you hear. <laughs> the engineer was Phil Ramon. All right. Time. See? And Ooh. Neshui came on to become Neshui. one of our greatest innovative executives. <laughs> and towards the end of his career, he said to me, here's a man that started with no son, in Venice, there's a lot of sun in Venice. What? He left a legacy of innovation. And I'm telling you this, you know, because we have a strange kind of a legacy right now. Everybody looks back six months ago and they say, that's old school. It's not true. I was lucky enough to come up with the first team of American <laughs> music. Louis Armstrong, Dizzy Gillespie. Oh, boy. Duke Ellington. So beat us up. Yeah, so kill us. We weren't there. You were. (laughs) Sarah Bond. He was lucky. And Neshi, we understand what this was all about. (laughs) Neshi. Neshi's dead. (laughs) Because I guess what? Yeah. Somebody break the news to him. (laughs) Wait wait, wait, wait a minute. Oh, no. Now they're pulling him off. I got more to say. Let me listen to you. Don't 
forget the legacy that they left, you know, because... <laughs> Go live in a trailer with Bo Diddley. <laughs> <laughs> Let me listen to you. <laughs> There's a little more. Should we keep going? Yes. Yeah. I'm fascinated. You guys digging this? Unbelievable. I'm digging it. You digging it, Fred? This is the saddest thing I've ever heard. I, mean, I love it. You can't it. take your eyes off it. It's kind of fun, though. Oh, come on. He can, he'll he wake up in the morning and be fine. Right. He'll get back. He'll be, I've seen him on Oprah. He was fine. He'll be fine in the morning. He'll snap out of it. Of course. <laughs> and we wonder how they got Chuck Berry's money. <laughs> what, did somebody miss uh, this guy's money? Quincy? Quincy, we're going to start a mink farm in Memphis, Texas. <laughs> well, I'll go for that. <laughs> Nashree. <laughs> Who's in it? Raul Charles. <laughs> Raul Charles, who was 16. Ah, I was 14. Thelius Mink. <laughs> Thelius Minky. <laughs> Thelius Minky. It's bad enough the guy's name is Thelonious Monk. <laughs> yeah, you don't butcher a name like that. <laughs> With Thelius Minky. Hey, this is the classical music of America. Louis Armstrong, Dizzy Gillespie. Duke Ellington, Count Basie, and you're going to look back and say, I didn't know we had that. <laughs> you should have carried him off in a straight jacket. I didn't know we had that. Oh. I feel very much about this. You know, these guys with jazz, let me just say something, and, and this guy's ramblings. These guys with jazz all make it seem like, what's, you know, what's wrong with the public that they're not sophisticated enough to get into jazz? Jazz blows. Look, the people like what they like. Yeah. That's I mean, all there is to you know, it. What, what, you have to like jazz in order to be, you know, it's horrible. It's all over the place. You can't get into it. You can't dance to it. You can't think to it. Makes me want to drive off the road. Yeah, I know. I mean, excuse me for being a bore. <laughs> you know? Sorry, Fred. I just don't like it. Hey, they like it in Europe. Go there. Yeah, go live there. <laughs> you know, all these guys, they're all bitter and, and hostile because, you know, we had Louis Armstrong and you guys are just brilliant. That's a dumb. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. I didn't like it. That's a uh, classical music. Dude, classical. <laughs> That's all classical. That's a black man's classical music. Yeah. Well, then go listen to it. But black people don't even listen to no, it. No, of course not. Black people hate jazz. Just a couple of you bougie blacks. <laughs> <laughs> so did Nessie. You can laugh. <laughs> he must have heard it. Hmm. He's talking to us. Or whatever. <laughs> I feel like the luckiest human being on the planet. <laughs> You're not acting like it. Here. In Iran. <laughs> be born at this time. Hmm. Doesn't sound like you're real happy about it. <laughs> Sounds like you're drowning your sorrows. <laughs> Quite honestly. Just grab him off. Nobody can catch him. He's sliding through <laughs> their hey fingers. Guys. Hey, guys. I promise you, you'll understand what I'm talking about when it happens. Oh. <laughs> they will be considered the <laughs> box, the Beethovens. The box? The box, B-O-X. <laughs> Give me a box, I gotta vomit. Drums of the future, of our culture. And unfortunately, the Americans are the ones that don't understand what it's all about. Oh, Look. sorry. Everybody thinks they have it covered. But I promise you, you don't understand what's happening. They didn't understand we, Mozart either. Come you don't on. Under, I promise you, you don't understand what's happening. Well, okay, so we don't understand. What are you going to do? We don't get it. We're not hip. Music is music. Either you like it or you don't. That's what makes a hit record. You can't force somebody to like something they don't like. It's not the first time we've not recognized something. Yeah. Okay. We'll recognize it if we pay for it. <laughs> Are the people that understands what this is music is all about. And I'm very happy to say that Nessie Reagan was one of the people that understood... Nessie Reagan. <laughs> first. All right. Thank you. And good night. Does he get off? I don't know. And oh. Oh, Selma. <laughs> Who? And Ahmed. And Mika. And Layla. And Rustan. All oh. these people have embarrassed. And the people that follow this legacy, you can laugh all you want to. You know, in 50 years, you'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love them. I love what they stood for. And oh, I'm boy. very proud to be part See, this is a real of the legacy that left for towards us, you know. 
including this man that stands beside me tonight, Ahmed Ergen, because we started together, you know. You better understand what you're all about. That's what America is about. <laughs> Have him on Oprah and play this for him. <laughs> this is the Selma. Uh -oh. Heard again? Selma or Thelma? Yeah, well, she was Thelma last time. Maybe <laughs> no, that it's was Selma. a mistake. I don't know. Where's the Lenny is Mink? <laughs> <laughs> Thelma Mink. And to Layla? Uh oh. <laughs> Layla? He named his daughter Layla? I thought her was Mika. <laughs> Layla? <laughs> And Aristan, they are beautiful human beings, and they have something to be very proud about with it, for what their father left for them. You know, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Thank you tonight. There's Malik and Sabrina. <laughs> That's it. Oh, my goodness. What a speech. Hey, we got through it. We liked it. That was fun. What a speech. I liked the speech. That was heartfelt. Yeah, it was kind of real, you know? <laughs> hey, so maybe the guy had a few drinks. Who knows what he did? A few and cocktails. You people! <laughs> you know, I understand. I can picture Jackie giving the same speech a couple of years now. <laughs> Jackie has given speeches like this. Emily and Deborah! <laughs> your father, that son of a bitch! <laughs> he loved me, but I, I never knew it! And I was there! <laughs> and Fred, he do. Crap! I, I was there at the Madison Square gun. I'll never forget the time your old man was fumfering and I hand him a piece of paper and said, Malika is a bitch! And I was the inventor of flying gag writing. <laughs> I have written flying gag writing, damn it! <laughs> no. And your father understood that. And we were in the room, me! <laughs> and, uh, Nancy! And Billy West! I love you! You got a lot to be proud of! You son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah. Your father was the box of comedy. <laughs> Someday you'll understand. And you can laugh all you want. And I only want the more money to get a throat operation! <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's take a break and let's you get know to the what news. The only question I have yeah, is, yeah, if you had to give a speech, out, yeah, I better get loaded. Would you sit there and drink until it was time? I don't know. You don't know that he was drinking. What I know, saying, I've seen people do that. I'm not saying right. Quincy Jones did that, right? Because you don't know that he was drinking. But would you sit yes. there and have five or six drinks? Yes. Before. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was time for you to give your. That's speech. not enough drinks. <laughs> that speech is almost enough to make Jackie stop drinking. <laughs> not quite, not quite though. Stop.